Welcome to Big Brother Basics, where we break down the basics of Big Brother 16. I'm Jacob Harple, and here with me today is the always fantastic, always loyal, but don't ask him to be in a girl alliance because he might have to take his bra off, Keith Guerrero. <laughs> and with us is the always perfect, such a sweetheart. If you have a splinters, he'll get them out for you, but you have to be careful because he might be ex-military. Aaron Nunley. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, no. Thank you for having me. So, we've got a lot to cover today. We're going over the veto episode as well as the live eviction. What do you guys think? It's the first week's over. What do you guys think of the game so far? Bye, Felicia. <laughs> It was a very eventful first week. Like, the Big Brother, uh, what is it, producers did not have to, like, grasp at straws for some sort of events, some sort of events to unfold. So, um, I really enjoyed the, the roller coaster that was week one of this Big Brother season. Yeah. And they didn't even put everything in there. That's how you know. Yeah, that's I how think... you know it's a good season when, like, there's so much shit that did not air at all. I think they need to uh, check it. We need to look at the record books for this week because this might have been most alliances ever created in week one of Big Brother, or at least it's attempt uh, to create. And so I agree. It's been a pretty eventful week one. So I know that we talked about it in the last episode about, you know, like where are these have-nots? Well, uh, it looks like they all just, I guess the HOH just gets to decide who the have-nots are. Um, which is just another reason why I wouldn't want to be HOH. Like, first of all, you're, you're making nominees that might not even stick. You're directly picking who they have nots are. <laughs> like, if you're HOH, like, that's a, that's a lot of hate you're spreading. Um, mm-hmm. I also loved how they just, like, were like, oh, pick me, pick me, I want to be a have not. And it's just like, girl, by day 70, you're going to be like, Jesus Christ, get this, get this away from me. Like, I was shocked that people were so willing to... Uh, be have nots. That's how you know that they were recruited. <laughs> Nobody right. who actually applied for this season gonna be like, oh yeah, I want to experience a half not room. No, you don't. No, well, I will not slop. be on slop. No, I will not be taking cold showers. No, I will not sleep in that bed. Like, no. It's just that week one excitement of people like, I'm on Big Brother. I can do this. I, this is gonna be a fantastic <laughs> experience. And then, like you said, when it comes to like day eight. <laughs> they're going to be completely I'm over the whole have not experience. I'm hungry. That's when they'll start hungry. making it personal. I can't wait till like the have not decisions become personal. That'll be fun. Oh yeah, no that's going to get yeah, that's going to get really interesting. Um so was this I guess the so it's part 2 we're following Devin's witch hunt of Donnie and we finally start, we start to see some some doubt in poor Donnie's or poor Devin's mind as he's laying in bed and we get the nice confessional well uh maybe Donnie is who he says he is and it's just kind of like really Devin I, I just think that's a great uh it just really really I think captures Devin's game it's just one moment he's like no I would like I would go to like I know for a fact that Donnie's not who he says he is and then like 24 hours later well Maybe he is who he says he is. And I just who think... Who are you? Yeah, who, who are you? Are. Yeah, like, I'm like, I won't be surprised if next week Devin's starting to, like, question who he is. Like, he's starting <laughs> to flip-flop so much. Am I aligned with myself? Like, did I betray myself? <laughs> Am I, you know... What is the bomb me? squad? <laughs> it oh was, it was so perfect when the, the camera showed the interaction between Devin and Donnie, and Devin's just on his bed with his hands over, over his head. Like, his face looked very like shocked like he didn't know anything he was looking up into the darkness of the ceiling of the room to look for the answers about uh donnie's identity and yeah it just captured his very essence of not knowing anything <laughs> <laughs> My yeah i uh i'm excited to to see all the different careers they believe that donnie has <laughs> throughout the season and, and god knows this america's twist isn't gonna help them but we'll talk about that later in the show um so yeah, and like the worst part is, is like Donnie winning the veto is only gonna add fuel to that fire. I feel like, and he like the word that he spelled wasn't even like that, like like boisterous or something. You know, it was splinters. He spelled splinter and added an s. That's what he did. That's his strategy. 
So I don't know. Do we do we think that like Donnie might be safe this week? But do we think that Donnie's going to have a really hard road ahead of him just because of all these like paranoid paranoid people or, or theories that are going on about him? I think just that competition in general just showed how stupid the house guests are because here they are <laughs> rushing like running back and forth back and forth like trying to get all these tiles and then Donnie is simply just walking catching his breath <laughs> observing the situation he wants to gather his thoughts he doesn't want to forget anything let me get my letters <laughs> let me get my letters let me make sure my stilettos are on tight <laughs> and yeah he's he's being very very calm he's just wiping off the tile nope I don't need that nope I don't need that Ooh, I need this this will work and he just walks back. And it's just very representative of this season so far. Because a lot of people are thinking way too much, way too fast, acting too like aggressively, too too quickly. And um, Donnie's sitting there with the POV. So I think it's just very representative of like <laughs> what's going on inside the house right now. And I think that he just proves, like just be simple, be genuine, be authentic, be who you are, and things will work out. And that's why Joey's not in the house, because she was not a man. Don't go for her yet. <laughs> What do you what do you think, Aaron? Um, no, I mean, I I do because I think this is the what fourth time we've seen this POV competition. Mm-hmm. I know I've seen it at least three times. Yeah, um, but that sounds right. I give them a little bit, like a little, like a splinter <laughs> <of> worth <laughs> of credit that it could be a kind of difficult. Like a stress situation. I don't know how much time they actually get during that competition, but like, you know, like doing all that stuff. I understand that you're trying to get, you're kind of hurt, you're trying to snag your letters, you're trying to be, you know, shuffle, 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 all that stuff. But, like, I feel like some people just, their brain, like, it shuts, like, half of it shuts off during that competition because they're just running around like chickens with their head cut off. Like, I don't understand. Mm-hmm. <sighs> mm-hmm. I don't get it. Uh, kind of, I, I like, I like what you said, Keith, and I agree. Like, not just like of the house in general, but I think that Donnie's performance in that veto or just like, I guess the other performance this just really kind of represents like what, how you play this game. Like you can't like sporadically be running around looking for anything that you can grab. You got to take your time. Slow and steady wins the race, baby. And you know, that's how Donnie was able to survive through the military. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, I heard, th- I heard some people say this and I thought it was really funny. I wanted to bring it up. And it's just funny because even if Donnie was in the military, how is how does who cares? Like, is that going to give him some advantage in the Big Brother house? Like, is there going to be like a uh, a military obstacle course HOH or who can interrogate a foreign invader POV? Like, who who cares if he's ex military? Like, he's he's a forty year old man <laughs> who you know can't socialize as well as you know some of the others, or he's not as you know. Um, I don't know. You know what I mean? But like. It, it, What's the importance of that? Like, it's, it's it's just like how everybody, like every season, tries to hide stuff. Like how Derek is hiding that he's a cop. Like I don't know how that's gonna help you here, unless you know they bring out the police batons in the next HOH competition and you go at somebody. <laughs> exactly. But, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I just think it's funny, but I really wish the best for Donnie. I, he's definitely, I think it's obvious he's a fan favorite, and I'm really excited to see what he's got up his sleeve. I, I'm I'm hoping that he's he's got the ability to socialize. Yeah, it makes him make some moves. I want to see him make some moves. Well, that knife, uh, mm-hmm, that ex military knife. You know, it really blows my mind like how like all the like ripped, muscly beef six like the six guys, everyone but Hayden and Donnie are all intimidated by Donnie of like all the people inside the house are like they're trying to make reasons why Donnie is such a threat. It was really, really hilarious. Like immediately after the veto competition. Wait, was it veto? Oh no, Battle of the Blocks, sorry. Battle of the Block competition where like Caleb he was and really Devin strong in that swing competition <laughs> that we're gonna have every competition this season. Yeah. Caleb and Devin were just like going in on Donnie. I'm like, man, y'all are some cowards. Like you already have a six man alliance with all these like athletically strong no. people and you want to say that Donnie's a threat like look at your alliance you should be fine if you all, all six of you can't beat Donnie maybe you should reevaluate who you're aligned with <laughs> so the big thing I guess that we need to talk about with the veto episode was definitely the uh the girl alliance and you know I, I guess like was there a part in the show where they they talked about El Quattro like dissolving because I feel like that it just it was just like common knowledge it's like all right El Quattro doesn't exist anymore 
anymore. No, they didn't talk about it. The only thing that they've done with girls this season so far is zoom on, like, Nicole, Christine, and then, like, it's never game talk when they're talking. It's just, you know, boys or something. Yeah. I don't know. They just make them look stupid. Yeah, I was really upset with that. Um, I think it was, I can't remember what, I think it was the uh, nominations episode. Like, the whole, like, Devin, like, oh, girls are so emotional, and then they do, like, a, a cut of Nicole yeah, and Brittany. That made me so mad. I was like, why are we giving these guys the edit of, oh, this is a great alliance. Like, it's just, I don't know. Like, And, like, when they cut to Jocasta, and I can't remember what she said exactly except for her being in an alliance with Jesus, but the thing she said before that, I was like, oh, well, you know, it's just hard to tell. Everyone's talking to everybody. And I was like, that's a, that's a valid thing to say, Jocasta. Like, why, why, are you giving, why are they giving you a stupid edit for something like that? Like, that was really disappointing for me because I feel like we've got some really good girl players in the house this season. And, um, I don't just know. Because, just because they're not in a huge alliance. Yeah. They're not like, getting airtime for, for exactly. what they do. You've got Devin the Demolisher demolishing relationships all over the place. But, yeah. anyway. So, Joey tries to, I guess, regroup with the girl alliance. Um, I guess she she doesn't like the bathroom or something like that. She yeah, has, like, bathroom. six six girls. They start talking about the alliance. Um I think Derek's the first person to notice something is wrong, brings it to Caleb and Devin's attention. I guess they bring up Amber later, and she essentially confirms it and says that it was Joey. So I guess my first question is, is was this a good approach for Joey? Did Joey approach this in the right way? Or could there was there something differently that she could have done to try and get in a, a group like this formed? I don't know. I understand, like, her point of view... Like, if you want to make an alliance with me and you want to make it with other people, like, bring us all in the same room and tell us, don't do it one-on-one because that's where you get, like, miscommunication and, like, I don't really know if this person agreed to it or are you just telling me that they agreed to it? Like, I understand that. Um, doing it in the open like that, probably not so good. Like, in another room where the door is closed would have been better because then, you know, somebody like Derek wouldn't have saw. Um, but I don't think it, I don't think it would have changed much. Like even if she did it in a closed room with Amber, Amber is trying to be the type of person who doesn't lie, who doesn't, um, who's not going to be shady, and all this type of stuff. And so she's going to stick to her number one alliance because I guess she forgot that she was already in alliance before that. Um, Joey's biggest yeah. mistake was that she was trying to be strategic without a position of power. And without the post veto ceremony being taken place yet, or being already taken place, because I don't care about power, but I do agree about the veto ceremony. Right. Well, yeah, power, whatever. But like, had the veto ceremony taken place, that's when you start being strategic because the HOH is legitimately like they can't do anything after yeah. that. So you lay low until the post veto ceremony, so that you're not nominated, and then if you want to create an all girls alliance, Amber might even be more inclined because you know. Uh, Caleb would be out of power next week and she would need safety for the following week, you know? Yeah. So, um, that would have been more appealing, but, you know, Joey was a recruit because, you know, <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just go ahead and, like, give her some slack, but, um, yeah, like, she, she, did, she acted on it way too early. The idea was there, um, uh, but the substance wasn't, and uh, that's why she got the boot. I, yeah, I, I, I'm, I agree with that, just because... You know, it's week one. There's so many people in this house. When you get, get a, when you try to get a group of six together, you don't know where everyone's mind is thinking, who's talking to who, where that's going to go back. You know that Donnie, the target, I mean, I guess they don't, you don't know how Vito's going to go down at that point. And so if something crazy were to happen and the target wins Vito, you don't know who the next target's going to be. You don't know if it's going to be you or this person or this person. So, yeah, I think patience is a really big key. And I think it's just another example of why you really got to, like, wait to pull the trigger on something like that like yeah bomb squad is in a a lot of was in a lot of power this week but like it's it was very it something so quickly made like that is gonna implode and i think we're already seeing cracks and i definitely so i definitely agree what you're saying with like patience being key because not only joey was quick about trying to create the alliance but she was also quick to apologize and backtrack and like basically expose herself to everyone like this is all before the veto ceremony happened 
I'm like, yeah. Joey, where is your patience? She didn't have any. She was like, she just, I don't know, maybe the pressure got to her inside being the house, but um, yeah, it seemed like she was just like m making one decision, then making another rash one, and then making another rash decision that ultimately led yeah, to her she, demise. Yeah, she could have, I mean, even with the alliance being exposed, she could have probably, I don't know, like, I understand where she was coming from with like the being honest thing, but it's just like, by her doing that, it's like, Girl, you're giving these people reasons to nominate yeah. you. Like you're week one, they would for anything. They exactly. Need, yeah. Exactly. They need any reason they can get week one. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, like she did suffer from the bomb squad, but I mean, David suffered from the moving company last season, and we saw what happened to the moving company the like next week. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think Joey leaving is just a reminder for players. You know, it, it, patience is an important part of this game and you really just have to like you can't force things like that um and i think that's ultimately why she left this week um what do you guys think about amber do we think that amber made the right decision by i want i guess would you say that she threw joey under the bus she i say she did yeah i would she say de she definitely did because she was dropping she dropped her name you know she yeah, yeah. the bus yeah. was coming and she pushed joey in front of it <laughs> So do we think that Amber made the right call? I was personally, I, I was on the defense about it the whole time while I was watching the episode because I was like, well, I mean, this alliance, you know, it could happen, the whole female thing, but there are already suspicions about it from the other players in the house. If it gets blown up and she's a part of it, that really puts in an awkward position with the bomb squad. Um, or does she just kind of try and ride both sides for a little bit, see what happens, you know, see what, you know, who stays in power, and just kind of, you know, walk in the middle for a little bit. For entertainment purposes, I wanted Amber to align with Joey and go after the Bomb Squad, but for strategic purposes and taking the position of Amber inside the Big Brother game, I think she made the best move um, in just getting rid of Joey week one. Just make it an easy first week for her and just see how the rest of the season plays out. What do you think, Aaron? I feel like if I were Amber, I mean, I wouldn't have been able to be Amber because of the way that she's playing. Um, but if I were Amber, I would rather, like, take Joey to the side. Like, after our awkward little interaction there, I take her to the side and be like, I'm not down for a cool female alliance. I'll grab a couple of us, and we can do that whole thing. But, like, like you know, Jacasa said, all female alliances don't work. Um there's no, there's no reason to not have more people looking out for you. That way, you don't have to win H O H, Amber, mm -hmm. and you don't have to um, make decisions that you don't want to make. I don't, know. I don't know. Should Amber have done that before or after she took her bra off? <laughs> <laughs> it's hot it's, in here, y'all. <laughs> it's hot. Make, they didn't make Caleb jokes because they didn't freaking air it. So. Oh she my can't, god! She can't do. She can't take her bra off, or Kayla will be there. Exactly, in the heat of the game. <clears throat> All right. Well, I think that's that. Pretty much clears it about the veto episode. Unless there was anything you guys wanted to bring up. No, I mean we even jump into the yeah the eviction episode. Because yeah, literally nothing happened there. Yeah. So let's go ahead and move on to the eviction episode. I think the first big thing that we saw was Alex. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, I think I would just, I would really like to sit in on Joey's, like, thought process. And would be like, you know, you know what I should do to stay? I gotta, I gotta let these people know that they can't be afraid anymore. But how, how should I do it? Maybe I should look like a, uh, a early uh, 1950s hobo cartoon. You know, she's got, like, the nice makeup, the, the beanie, every, like, the flannel or something. And, you know, I think that's, that's what's gonna really give me some votes, really throw some votes my way. So. <laughs> that's the thing, like. What she was saying, I had no problem with what the words that were coming out of her mouth because they were true. And people like some of the girls that she was talking to were actually like she's saying she's preaching the truth, you know. So I had nothing wrong with what she was saying. It's how she like, like I don't, I don't understand how Alex was going, like how that helped. Like I don't like I don't think it really hurt because I don't I don't know like, he didn't attack anybody. Like I don't like I just don't understand why Alex had to come out. Why? Who are you? Mm -hmm. But he was cringeworthy. Like I was, I felt really awkward, especially when she went to the beehive room where Caleb was there, and she's still screaming, "Like you're gonna be afraid of the power? People who have the power this week?" And Caleb's sitting there, and I'm like, 
like, bro, you're kind of talking about him. <laughs> yeah. It was weird. It was just weird and awkward for me. And I wasn't even in the house. Who, who do you think is more responsible for throwing uh, Joey under the bus? Is it is it Amber or, or Alex? Do you think Alex might have, <laughs> might have thrown Joey under the bus a little bit? No, I think Amber was more responsible for throwing Joey under the bus, but Alex was basically what Joey was saying all the things that Joey was too scared to say inside the house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Joey, yeah, I, take, Joey, if you're upset with the house, take credit for it. Be yourself and say all these things because they're true. And don't make some weird caricature because that just, like, demeans the value of what you're saying. It, it does. That, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. Like, these people, like, they, if they want to keep you, they need to know that they can have faith in you as an ally. That, that, and, like, you, by, by making some caricature or whatever... <laughs> To try and, like, I don't know. It just seemed a little... It just wasn't necessary. It like, was her, there, like, I don't know if Joey realized this, but we're past the casting phase. Like, you're inside the Big Brother <laughs> house. You don't have to try to, like, get everyone's attention and do all these stunts. Like, you're in the house now. You don't need to do you all this extra show, stuff. <laughs> you made I, the final 16. <laughs> I loved what was happening during the feeds because people were, like, legit, like, is this a Team America thing going on? And yeah. then it's just like, nope. Bitch is just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Original idea. I'm literally crazy. Speaking of crazy, I love the Devin segment where it's like, it's got to be unanimous, you know? If it's not <laughs> unanimous, then we know we're going to come after you. You're going to be the next target, you know, because it's got to be unanimous. I it's feel just, like uh, we fan, like people who watch Big Brother year after year, we all collectively are so sick and tired of unanimous votes, especially week one, because... How are you going to catch my vote? Like, Aaron's, Aaron is still trying to find out who voted out David <laughs> first. Like, you can't catch somebody's vote. Like, they're all going to lie to you. They're all going to say what you want to hear. I would have, like, uh, you, you give me an any season with people, I, I would have thrown out that hinky vote, and I would have been like, yeah, I voted with the majority. What you going to do? Thank like, you, jump, Aaron. Jump thank you. I was wondering why no one was, like, willing to be that one vote. Like, when you know all the votes are there to get rid of somebody, throw a wild vote. Deny, deny, deny. Make the game interesting. But what I do appreciate about Devin being paranoid, sure, people will bitch and complain, like, oh, Devin, why does the vote have to be unanimous? But the vote was unanimous. And so, therefore, it was effective. Yeah. And I think Devin, like, pressuring everybody to do what he wants actually worked. So... In a weird way, like, Devin is kind of controlling whatever happened, whatever the vote situation went down. Because at the end of the day, it was unanimous, and Devin was telling everybody, we need to have a unanimous vote. I, I agree to that to a point. Like, I, I, I definitely, it's it's hard to deny that Devin is not in power, because, like, he, whatever he's doing is working. But <laughs> I feel like Devin has put himself in a position that the moment that opening is there, he's gone. Like, that's just the way it is. So, like, yeah, he's calling the shots right now, but it's kind of like Jason Scott from season five where it's just like, yeah, they're listening to them or they're going along, but the moment they can turn on him, he's out of the house. I don't understand how you don't play. I mean, I know a lot of these people are recruits, so they don't know. Um, <laughs> but you playing like that, like, you you never can win like that. You literally can't win being a bully because that's what it is you're bullying people to do what you want them to do you because you can't be in power every week i don't care if you think that you and Deb and caleb can just bounce hohs back and forth you, it's not going to happen i guarantee you you can't you don't you're you're not you're not that perfect bro and so when you lose that position of power you're going to find yourself on the block you're going to find yourself I don't know. A... I don't. I don't see it as bullying, just because I don't see like evil intentions behind whatever Devin's like doing it. Because I think, I think it's just he's really good at pressuring people, <laughs> and I guess that could be, I guess, bullying. But like, I don't see any evil behind it. That's which is why I guess I differentiate the difference between bullying and pressuring someone. I don't think he's maliciously doing anything, but it's definitely like it's apparent like he's peer pressuring or he's trying to strong arm people a little bit into making decisions. Yeah, strong arm. Uh, yeah, because you know, strong. Arm. I want to make. I want to make a Guy Alliance bingo card, and one of the spots should be, dude, we can win every competition. <laughs> we can. You can have different blocks that say, we're totally stacked, bro. You exactly. and me to the end. Floaters got to go. Floaters. We need to make a, a Big Brother basic Sky Alliance bingo card. So <laughs> which, line. which is hilarious, because their, their target is supposed to be the floater. Yet Joey tried to start an alliance, which is the opposite of what floaters usually do. They're trying to 
They're trying not to make any ruffles in the water. Oh. Joey's trying to make a splash, and they're like, no, you've got to go. You're trying to you're trying to play this game, Joey. I know, you're trying, right? You're playing I'm, this game? I'm a little oh, no, no. I'm, playing. I'm a little surprised that Devin didn't, didn't just offer her a spot in the bomb <laughs> Like, I thought that's what was going to happen when they're having that conversation. And she's she like, you know what, Joey? I like your I spirit. Respect, I, respect I respect your that. gameplay. You know, guys the lights. Gets kind of old. So why don't you just jump in, you know? You're a full-fledged bomb squad. Welcome to the team. Let me tell you. Full-fledged. <laughs> in the bomb squad. And then I'm going to tell them that you're in the bomb squad. Yeah, yeah. All right. No, I, yeah, so that's, I mean, that's a fair point. But that's just, I mean, they're just stupid. So I mean, that's really all you can say about that. Like, they, they not, say they're doing one thing, they do the other. Like That's literally how floaters get by. Because people do stuff, like, each week, they're like, oh, it's going to be a floater, it's going to be a floater. But each week, somebody's going to do something that pisses somebody off or that makes the house turn against them. That's how, really, how floaters get by, like, every season. It's because somebody does something every week that changes people like attention like they always look a different way because you know somebody gets too cocky or somebody you know tells it how it is and uh, that's how voters get by that's i how agree i agree and I, this is jordan we talked to, we talked a little bit about it earlier but i want to just bring it up again so the vote was 13 to 0 which is the most votes the house guest has ever received um it i was, was actually uh 12 to zero to one because Amber voted for Julie. That's true. I forgot about that. Yeah, Dewey. I'm surprised that uh, we didn't see someone try and like a like maybe production push Amber over <laughs> for voting out Julie because they didn't want her to. They didn't want Julie Chen on the block this week. Julie, Amber should have been rallying those votes to get Julie out. Mm-hmm. But Devin was too busy rallying votes to get Joey out. That's how. That's how Julie survives. Every week we try to get Julie out. She sneaks Every on week. through. She's the she biggest floater. She is the biggest floater. You know, she's not. Even, they don't even know that she's in the house. You can't even see her. <laughs> Unbelievable. But yeah, like you, you both said it, and I completely agree. Like I was really hoping. I was waiting for someone to throw out a vote. Like. I'm just kind of like, let's do it. Like, we know how some how crazy these people are. Let's see someone throw out a vote and just cause absolute chaos in the Big Brother house. Honestly, I would I would have loved it if a member of the bomb squad threw out the wild vote. Like, I would want, like, Zach to throw out a wild vote or, like, Derek to throw out a wild vote or Cody to throw out a wild vote. Just because, like, they would never suspect someone in their own alliance to be that wild vote. And I think that here's, element of surprise would have been awesome. Here's my thing about it, though. If I liked Britney, then I would have voted with the majority because they were already suspecting Britney and um, Joey were, like, decently close. And so if there was going to be that hinky vote, they were going to blame it on Britney, like, 100%. Really? I guarantee you. So okay. if I didn't like Britney, if I was like, I'm ready for her to go, I would have done a that hinky vote, and I'd been like, it's probably Britney. Get her. <laughs> but, yeah, like, uh, there's strategy to it. Like, like I'm really – it's disappointing because it's it was such a great – opportunity to really just kind of like shake things up and ruffle some feathers because it's like shit like that it's going to help players like zach or frankie you know people riding the middle to just kind of skate through because you're you're creating this conflict and this tension between all the other players in the house oh yeah zach and frankie on team keith they're gonna ride it all the way final two on mess express Express is gonna get it to the end (laughs) i'm sorry i'm sorry that you you suffered your loss this week aaron you know i do Um, it's okay. I mean, we obviously um, didn't know what we were in for. There were some people on Team Aaron that need to shape it up, or we're going to have to kick them out, like, manually, because, I mean, I'm looking at you, Pow Pow. Um, I don't know what kind of game you think you're playing here, but I need you to pull it together. When you're on the block for Battle of Blocks, I need you to try to win instead of looking that hot mess you did. Last week, um, I don't know. Oh, but okay. Can we talk about uh, Joey and Pow Pow's little? Yes, I was just <laughs> thinking about that. The little exchange. Okay, so first off, I love that Joey wants to pull in this all girl alliance. She's like for the women, power for the women, and then she looks to her left and says, "Pow Pow, you're the weakest competitor here. Keep the strong ones. <laughs> Keep the strong women in the house." That is so counterintuitive to just, like, go and in on one of the your own women inside the house, Joey, when you try to create an all-girl alliance. Like, that just doesn't make sense. 
when you're on the block, you need to look weaker. Like, <laughs> like you just have, like you like pow pow. You're weaker. Oh, so you'll fight less. Okay, we'll keep you. Like Joey, no.